evening, everyone. I'd like to call the first public hearing for the uh, to order for the chatter changes. Uh, chatter changes are local options tax, uh, changing it from a, uh, elected to appointed clerk, in addition of personal property inventory taxation waiver. Uh, Vince, local options tax. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. With us tonight are David Sawyer. Flo Smith is on video. Um, and uh, Carl Parton and Joe Stahl. Okay, Vince. Okay. So a little bit. The, the way the charter change reads, and I'll, I'll read it directly from the amended charter, is on page two. A new paragraph D that says upon resolution of the select board or upon receipt of a petition signed by 5% of the registered voters of the town at an annual or special meeting warned for the purpose, the voters of the town may vote by a majority of those present and voting to assess any or all of the following. A 1% sales tax, a 1% rooms tax, a 1% meals and alcohol beverage tax. It goes on to read paragraph D.2. A tax imposed under the authority of this section shall be collected and administered by the Department of Taxes in accordance with 24 VSA section 138. It goes on to read D period 3. Revenues received through the imposition of a tax imposed under this section shall be designated for capital projects within the town. Uh, in your packet, you'll find this document as well as a presentation that I, I won't go through tonight. But this just basically tells you that the 70% uh, of the 1% for the last year that the state had uh, online, which was 2021, <coughs> that Berlin, had they implemented just the sales tax, we would have received $558,580. Just on the sales tax? Just on the sales tax. Just as an example. And again, in your package is a number of towns that already participate in the local option tax and which ones they participate in. There's a list of towns there. Um, and then the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation and one summary document that talks about the local option tax, or as we call it, our capital improvement funding plan. And um, so when you say capital improvements, you're talking uh, infrastructure and also equipment? Infrastructure, yep. Projects like bridge, roads, culverts, repairs um, are all, all included in that. Capital investments like highway equipment as well. Yep. And Tim, you were saying we needed what? Oh. Well, we have a dump truck that's coming up in the next year and a half to be replaced. The loader's getting up to its end of lifespan. And As an example on those notes, non, what Tim had given us for information before certain. was uh, the loader that he priced went from $180,000 18 months ago to 240000 this year. So 18 months, it went up by 60 grand for yep. just the cost of a loader to replace the one we currently have. Same specs? Yeah, just a slight bit larger. Yeah. I think it'll be better for the loader. I mean, we pile all our own material out there, so just a slight bit larger piece of machinery won't have to labor so hard to yeah. pile the material. <laughs> And how many trucks are, you, are up for replacement? Well, we're doing one this year, but that was for last year budget. And then, so in order to not stack everything up and kind of separate things out slowly, because the six wheeler should be replaced in two years, and then the loader is going to be about that time for its lifespan. 
and due to the fact that it's taking up to almost a year now to either purchase a truck and go through the process between building it and everything else and the same thing with equipment they're telling everybody if you order something it's it's going to be a year before you see it so just to kind of we're going to have to start thinking ahead a year to keep on schedule otherwise we're going to start well the loader's not under warranty but the trucks will start running out of warranty and then we're going to start you know breakdowns will be out of pocket and and you anything else on this no i think uh again in the in the summary sheet that's in your package when this was prepared originally right if just just to give a ballpark for how it could impact taxes on the residents you know if 100 percent of the lot revenue is dedicated to property tax relief through this right a two hundred thousand dollar house would see about a 17 to 18 percent or 170 dollar reduction in property taxes um so to make up for that with the increased local option tax, they'd need to spend like 17000 on tax taxable items in Berlin. So again, it's, a lot of this revenue is going to come from, you know, non-residents as well, shopping in town. So just to put it in perspective from the numbers. Any other discussion on this? Okay, hearing none, um, close the hearing for the local options tax and open the hearing on the elected ah. elected to appointed with town we, clerk. We we have a hand up from Mr. Delcor. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, question. I, it's the first time that I, I sort of looked at the language closely. Um, or, so it sounds like if this, when you put this on the ballot and it's approved, it would have to be on the ballot again um, before anything was implemented. Uh, well, the process is we have hearings, then it goes to a vote before the, uh, hopefully in November before the town and residents, and then it has to go to the legislature to be approved by the legislature. Right, but the way I'm reading the language, it sounds like what you're what you're getting is off, is author, is language in the charter that allows you to either on your own resolution or by petition ask the voters to approve the local option taxes that you list. And I'm not sure that's what you want to do. It creates another step. It's not the way Barry or Montpelier did it. Um, so you, you might want to look at that language and, and unless you want to create that extra hurdle and say, hey, you know, let's first say, are we willing to put the language in the charter? And if it's there, you know, do we want to have to go back to the voters to ask them to do what they already said that we could do sort of yeah. uh you know but i mean maybe you want the two votes but it, it, it seems like it reads that way now that there would be a vote in november and then before you ever had the local any local option tax the voters would have to approve which one um and that would be at a subsequent election um and i'm not sure that's what you what you what you want but maybe it is um and, and i don't care um, but that's, that's all I got. Yeah, I'm just going through this. So as I read this, Vince, yeah. the, the, since we have no local options tax now, mm -hmm. the way this would be implemented after the legislature approved it would be that the select board could uh, uh, implement them or we could have a petition signed by 5% of the registered voters in town to impl or to request us to implement them. But I see Dave's point with, the, with an annual or special meeting warrant for the purpose. I'll, uh, I can follow up on the language with that, but this is the recommended language from the League of Cities and Towns. Okay. Uh, that that's that's where I got this from. Again, I, I like to plagiarize with pride. If something's already working somewhere, yeah. um, why reinvent the wheel? But I, I'll, I'll follow up, and I'll even run it by our town attorney again for for well, clarity I would, on it. I would that. ask the league is is, uh, is their reasoning on it. Yeah. Because 
you know, it wasn't. I didn't understand it that way from the from the league in this wording, but I'll I'll go back and ask the spe very specific question in regards to that, and then I'll I'll yeah. bring it back. Yeah, just the way the, the way the sentence is structured, it makes it sound like either by your own resolution or by petition, you have to go back to the voters, um, and the or is what's pivotal there. It doesn't say you can do it on your own, um, which it sounds like you're wanting the voter. It, you know, my guess is you want the voters to, to say, um, and, 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 um, you know, it's, uh, it does seem repetitious. It, it creates an extra, it potentially creates an extra step. So, so, so it passes in November in order for the change to even be effective, it's got to get through the legislature. And then you're like next summer. And if the way the language is worded, somebody could point to you and say, Hey, you know, what we approved was you coming back to ask us if you're ever going to do this. Um, and now you're doing it on your own. And, and I wonder whether that wouldn't create some, you know, problem for the town and, and GovOps would probably catch that and say, Hey, what is it that you really want to do here? But it'd be too late because you'd already have voted it and people would, who w would read it with different opinions and, you know, and, you know, clearing up the confusion in advance would be a good idea. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, if you're confused, Dave, <coughs> anything else on this? So you'll look into that, Vince? I will. Yeah, okay. I've got a note to, to, to look um, into that. Yes, sir. If nothing else on this, we'll, we'll close the local option tax uh, hearing and open the one from elected to appointed clerk. Again, Vince. Okay. So, again, uh, how it looks in the charter. There will be under subchapter four town officers, under section 4.2 elected officers, item two, a town clerk for a term of three years will be taken out. And then in section 4.4, uh, section B, there'll be a line item number five added uh, that says town clerk under um, appointed which is what section B is. Okay, any discussion on this? Hearing none. So moved. So moved. Um, let's see here. Electric two point. Okay. Um, we will close the we're the, uh, hearing on the elected to appointed clerk. Do we have to have a vote on that? I'm kind of confused now. Well, the, uh, the board's already voted on these changes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just. I'm just talking about closing the hearing for the, just oh, that one thing. Closing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we do. Well, let's go back to the first one. Local option tax. I have a motion to close the hearing. Second. I have a motion no. first. <laughs> so moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motions closed. Uh, um, now we open the second one. Now we open the second one. Uh, uh, okay. Elected to appointed clerk. Um, any discussion? Have a motion to close the hearing. I make the motion to close the hearing. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And now we will open the addition to personal property inventory tax <coughs> waiver. Okay. So on that, what I am saying, and it says um, under subchapter section. Seven, section 7-3, addition of penalty for delinquent installments, which is already there, add following in personal property tax inventory taxation. Add paragraph C when the total assessed value of personal property tax, property inventory taxation is equal to or less than $1,650. The town treasurer may, um, after approval of the select board, waive the personal property inventory taxation. And what that means is that $1,650 is actually divided by $100. 
Okay, because all of our taxes, like yeah. if your house is worth 200000 it's divided by 900 okay? So that would be like 1650 And once you put the tax rate against that, it's like under $10. I have over 40 accounts that are under $10, and a lot of them are under $1. And it costs the town a lot of money to for me to try to collect that $1. Okay, and um, we're looking at a loss of like $253 revenue, but it costs me a lot more than that to send out the envelopes and to follow up because those are, those are the ones that tend not to be paid. So that is my reasoning. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, um, uh, motion to close the hearing on addition of proper personal property inventory taxation waiver. I'd make a motion to close the hearing on the personal property tax uh, inventory taxation waiver. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So the hearing is closed, and since we are scheduled to start the select board meeting at 6.35, or 6.45, we'll take a recess right now. So we're not too far off time. Entertain a motion to adjourn the hearing. Entertain a motion to adjourn the hearing. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn the hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the Wednesday, July 6th, regular scheduled, well, not regularly scheduled, but the scheduled um, select board meeting for the town of Berlin. With us tonight are to my left, Dave Sawyer. Flo Smith is in um, on the video. Uh, to my right is Joe. Uh, Carl Parton, and on my far right is Joe Staub. With us also is Vince Conti, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. Uh, let's see here. Um, addition or changes to the agenda? Yes, I have, I have two changes. Uh, one is to um, the board to authorize the board secretary, Carl, uh, to sign a bank document that Diane has that she also has to sign for removal of the uh, retired clerk from check authorization signing. And the second one is to move the, um, the interview uh, to uh, executive session. Okay. Uh, anything else then? Uh, public comment. Hearing none. Uh, Partridge Farms Area Association requests for town to participate as a co-committee on stormwater permit review and decision? Yes, so there's quite a lengthy package in there, um, but I'll just direct the board's attention to, on the first page, uh, paragraph four, three, uh, the last sentence in there uh, says in early April 2022, they learned that the town would need to be a co-permittee on their permitting process going forward, on this permitting process going forward. Now, I haven't talked to anybody with regards to this. Uh, Tom was, he's mentioned in the letter briefly involved in talking with them, uh, with the engineer that they hired, Bernie Chenette. Um, I don't have a lot of detail on this, but I'd also like to just draw your attention to the uh, first paragraph on the second page that says, and the where it just refers to the town again, um, that the town could apply for final design funding after completion of the initial permitting and 30% design work. Uh, given that time is now the essence, notice of, uh, is required by November 1st and current permit expires January 1st, 2023, and they believe this is our best funding option. They're respectfully requesting that the town take the following action. Acknowledge and accept the requirement to be a co-permittee on the 9050 permit. Acknowledge that a competitive and fair selection process was followed to retain the services of Watershed Consulting for this initial phase. Um, my only comment to that is um, I, my recommendation is we need to follow up with Tom regarding the conversation that he had with Bernie Ch Chenette where he did express concern regarding their selection process. And I don't know the results of that conversation. And then finally, the third is uh, they're asking the town to fully cooperate and support the efforts 
of the um, Partridge Farms uh, Area Association and uh, RG Development to comply with the current stormwater requirements and assist them with all funding opportunities going forward. So again, it's it's uh, in the, in this package. Um, there is a, a, a copy of the permitting process, a letter from the uh, Peter Walt, the Commissioner of Environmental Conservation, a copy of the permit that will need to be completed and filed, um, uh, watershed consulting uh, process that they, they're recommending to go through, and then at the end also from watershed, you know, a, a, cost of $19,000. Is that for design vents? Yep, it's it's my understanding it's for uh, design and uh, permitting. Well, it's for basically it's to comply with the stormwater requirements and to update their permit that expires. Knowing a little bit about this, I'm just curious why the town Under this pre in previous service uh, area, it's been designated through the state. There's been identified areas that require the stormwater runoff. And I've been involved in it a little bit because of uh, Western's trailer park. And there was a mention about partnering with the town uh, in that thing. I'm just wondering why, why that they feel we got a partner on this is it because the roads that we've adapted and yeah there's, there's a map you know in the how back that show the roads and that's what they're saying the reason for the partnership is linked to the roads from again from what i have gathered just from reading this because it I, i'd be curious to know how much in previous service the roads take up in that complex because uh i think it's a three acre or more that that requires to have that done and it's yeah. quite the design numbers are pretty close, but depending on what they have to put in there for a filtration system, that can be pretty expensive. So I'm just kind of wondering well, how, why, or who's saying that the town has to participate in this. Uh, I didn't see who recommended that in here when I went through that. I could have missed it. Um, again, so I haven't talked with anybody. I know Tom, he was mentioned in here, he has, and I haven't talked with Tom. To see what his discussions were with this as well, but he had some he had some questions that they stated in here as well, concern regarding the the selection process that they might have missed an opportunity for grant funding as well under that. So uh, again, I don't believe I have enough information to give the board to make a decision tonight on this as well. Um, yeah, I'd just like to know why, why, who's who's. If they're just asking us to be a part of it, I know early on when this came out and they started uh, by these satellite maps identifying parcels that had three acres of previous service that they had mentioned that maybe we could partner with the town, you know, at Weston's. Uh, it wasn't saying that the town had to join in on this. I'm just wondering what amount of impervious surface they may have up there that puts them over the three acres and if it if it's not put over the three acres and it is because of the town roads and maybe that's why we have to participate but if if they're over that three acre thing now i'm just curious okay it is in here i'm sorry terry purcell with the dec has stated that the town is required to be a co-permitted on this permit due to the presence of town-owned roads in the subdivision So, so we're in compliance with what's currently developed there, but with future development, we need to be part of it. Anyway, that's my understanding of what I'm reading here. Is that right? That, I, I'm not sure if that's correct or not. No, I, I can't say. That anything that has over three acres has to acquire, adhere to this new stormwater runoff thing. It's, it's not about future development. It's about things that are in already, already developed, is, is my understanding. The involvement I've had with it so far. Yeah, again, the way this reads is Partridge Farms has been identified as a three acre site by the DEC and is required under state stormwater permit 
3-9050 to implement additional stormwater treatment. So they've got to add stormwater treatment and to obtain a 9050 permit covering all impervious areas. And so that, according to Terry Purcell of the DEC, that's the, the town's required vehicle permit due to the presence of town owned roads in the subdivision. What is their solution? Is it going to be a, a settling pond somewhere, or is it? A, I did I think not. That's what the, the engineers details. do, they got to see what they can do to, to retain and, and so the water doesn't run right off into the watershed. Yeah. So, all those culverts, they currently just go to the river? Is that where they go now? Right. Tim? No, I do not believe. I think they run outside the railroad tracks at the bottom of the hill. What is there? Is like a swamp over there, Tim? Yeah, down the side of the tracks, it's wet. If my memory serves me correctly, because I know there's one there's one catch basin over towards well after you just cross the bridge like if you start heading toward Partridge Farm up in the development there's a, there's a catch basin right there that probably goes to the river but that's not part of the development like the development is on the other side of the tracks and as far as I know it, there's a ravine on one side of the road and then all the culverts from the right, right hand side going up, drain to the bottom. And then there's a culvert that picks it up and brings it to the left hand side as you go up the road. And then I think it just kind of runs out to the tracks. What's their timeline as far as having to have this uh, approved? They have to have this, uh, their notice of intent by November 1st. So we got a little time. Yeah. Yeah. It, it crosses underneath the railroad tracks and then where the parking lot is where Capital City used to store their extra cars. There's a yeah, long yeah. ditch that flows down the side of the railroad tracks that kind of just peters out behind the trailer park over there. It doesn't, it's not directly directed into the river. And Vince, you gotta look into this a little bit more? Yeah, I, I, I need to, to get a full understanding. I need to speak with Tom as well regarding his concern. So there's no requirement for a, an action tonight. So any other discussion on this? Okay, we'll move on to um, the Route 302 sewer line replacement discussion. Do you want to talk to that one a little bit from our public works meeting? <laughs> I don't know that we have enough information other than what we, we did. I was at the at the board meeting where there's I think there's five residents uh, on a line there that they're not sure who put it in, who owned it. It does come into our down at a manhole comes into to ours, but there's some pipe there that one of them's failed completely, and the other ones are gonna fail at some point. Uh, there's a question whether we need easements from the homeowners. Um, the Public Works Board would like the Select Board to step up and, and, and fund it, which I don't personally feel we should do. I think that it, we, we should go to the homeowners there uh, and make them aware of the situation. They're going to have failures. Uh, and whether they, you know, you know, I think at some point we need to help them a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's it, it's going to have to be replaced, and we've got to find out whether we need 
easements or if it's in the state 302 easement or not, right. which Vince was going to check and see, you know, to replace it. Uh, I guess what had happened was somebody put it in, connected back prior to what, 64, I think, you know, on that, something. But, and one of the residents has uh, sewage backing into it and it's un uninhabitable right now. The, how to say this, the line that's failed, nobody, nobody knows who owns it. That's they the don't question. know who owns the main line. They know that the residence where it's failed and they've tried to scope it both ways from the resident down to the line and from the line up and they can't see where it's failed, but it's the type of pipe it is, there's a name for it. I don't remember what the name was, but uh, that it's going to fail. I mean, it's it's old enough that it's going to collapse. Uh, and it's on the opposite side of the road than what our line is, right? Our line's on, on the opposite side of 302, and this goes down to a manhole, which is on, I think it's within the easement, if I understand that correctly, uh, that crosses and hooks into our line. Tom felt that we should step up and. Well, should the should the uh, should the uh, town pay for this, or should the public service works pay for it? I feel that the public works board should, or they should at least get the other residents involved into it, because there's going to be connections, you know, on their property to the new line. Um, I guess there, that at some point. Not to say that it was president set, but there was another similar situation where the town, the select board, uh, funded I believe twenty five percent of the project. Uh, not that it set presidents, but uh, that that they did twenty five percent. The public works board did twenty five percent, and then the residents were basically. Uh, Finance through the Public Works Board over a period of 20 years and build quarterly to pay for those. But nobody's approached the other residents, to my knowledge, at this point. I think there's some, some groundwork that has to be done first before we could even make a decision, or I wouldn't be comfortable making a decision to fund any part of the project until they've, they've at least contacted all residents and made them aware of the situation. Only one of the people, I believe, are aware of the situation at this point and that's the one that's failed yeah so it'd be a domino effect and the rest of it would be informed um so do we know what what part of the line has failed it's it's on the right away it's running parallel let's say with 302 correct they they ran they run the okay. scopes as they said earlier from both ends um and actually the house on the end that has the failure yeah um, he's plugged his line um so he doesn't have service anymore, nothing's backing up, but they ran a scope. He's replaced his portion of the lines on his property. They've run a scope just beyond his property and run into a blockage. And from the other end, they run up and run into a blockage there just off his property. So it's failed in just one spot? That's what they believe right now. But again, they've said it's, it's been there since the place. And we have five number of years. residents. And again, the, the and it's gonna affect them at some point, which this guy hasn't asked for any type of abatement or anything not where yet. it's not habitable. So it is going to affect things in the long run of the town. But we're aware of that. Right. The, 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 the problem is, Correct. again, there, there, there's no easy answer because the ownership of that line is not clear anywhere. There's, there's, no, there's been record searches done, I think, back to the at least 60s, maybe even the 40s um, on that and there's no record of easement for that line. Um, it's also in the state right away, so you know, my next thought is I need to contact the state right away department and see if they have anything going back that far that shows when that line was put in and who it was put in by, right? If there's, there's no, I don't think there's any disagreement about the lines from that to each of the homes, like everywhere else, those connections are the responsible lines of the homeowners. Um, it's just there's no, clear identification for that main line at this point in time. You know, the, the homeowners, at least one of them says, it's not my line, and it, right? The one that's got the failure right now, and you know, if you can show me different, he'll 
you know, buy into that. But right now, there's nothing to show there's any easements um, and the other, for us on those lines. Beyond the other that side, manhole. The other side of it, though, is I believe they've been paying for services sure. right along. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, so in a way, yeah. I mean, the the public works board responsible is the town. Somebody's responsible. responsible. Exactly. Exactly. Do we do? Does the town and the public works board go in and replace the main part of the line? And then, as far as a hookup to the house, is that on the homeowners? That was a question I had for Tom. He didn't feel that was the right thing that it'd be onto onto the works board and or the town. Um, I don't know. Unless they want a new line run from their houses out. I I think they probably need new lines from the house out. Well, why would we put in a new line and have those old, you know, have a it's failure? Gonna be, it's going to be cheaper to have the contractor while do they're it all, there. All at once. Correct, and and then that's why I thought there needed to be a discussion with them homeowners, because it would be cheaper at that thing, at that time. But they are responsible from our line to their house for that portion, and there has been no discussion with any of them at this point. If, if the main pipe that we don't know the ownership of uh, is replaced or a new, newer pipe, the transition from the, from the home to that new line, that transition point is that going to, I mean, that could be difficult because they could be 80 year old pipes from the house to our new one, right? And Correct. But you see, a, if, if, you were, if you were to approach, approach the homeowners with this and tell them that for X number of dollars, it will be replaced from the new line to their seller. Mm -hmm. And that way there, you, you just get together with the contract, you get five houses, you just do the math, and mm -hmm. each one pays equally and get it over with. So until we have that discussion with the other homeowners, my question is, is it the town also, or is it the Public Works Board that has that discussion with the homeowners? I think it's the Public Works Board. They've been collecting the fees for the services up to this time, but I mean, there has to be a discussion. It doesn't matter who it is, really. It, it has to, we have to have a discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Prefer, preferably before the uh, construction yeah. season goes out. Yeah, yeah. before more failures. Okay, uh, we can't really take an action on this. We don't have enough information. Right. And it, again, my follow-up is my takeaway is going to be that I am going to check with the state. I'm going to contact the state right away department and see if they can find any records um, for that in their in their right away permitting that goes back that far when that was installed to give us some indication. At least if we can figure out who put it in, we can figure it out the ownership from hopefully from that well I think regardless of who owns it or who put it in and who didn't it at some point it's going to have to be a part of the public works board anyways because you know, again I think that may be the decision that I'm looking for if you want me to generate a letter to the homeowners okay is it me or should it be the public works board that's all I'm asking I think the public works board should generate sure, a letter to the letter to them and then at that point, it becomes a town issue. You know, I mean, to we'll discuss with the public works board. Yeah. I mean, realistically, the public works board, if if uh, if they if they have been collecting the fees, they should take and generate the letter, and at least get the ball rolling, and then go from there. Because right now, we're not getting much accomplished on that, so. I would take and I would just take and have a chat with the public works board there, uh, and uh, have them get the letter out. Okay, I will. Uh, if the board agrees, I'll take action to uh, contact the chair of the public works board and let them know the board would like them to take the action with the with the homeowners to to notify them and. Uh, and to start discussions about options with them um, and then bring that information back to the board either directly or through me 
uh, to the board for a discussion with them on the next steps forward. So I'll entertain a motion to have Vince, have the board authorize Vince to get a hold of the Public Works Board to generate a letter to the homeowners. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Um, set fiscal year 23 tax rate. Yes. So you have, uh, you should have a document that looks like this in your package. That's going to give you, you numbers. Uh, uh, no, I did not. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> this one has the notes on it. You have the. Yes. Diane's going to hand you a document. Yes. That looks like this. Okay. This is just one of the scenarios. Okay. That is my package, not yours. <laughs> sorry. Did you want me to, to start with it? Sure. Okay. So our budget that we voted on for FY23 is $3,807,810. Then we have the article appropriations in the Berlin Fire Department, which is all appropriations. Uh, the article appropriations are 98,333. Fire Department is 365,276. And that the appropriations are up by 94,000 this year as opposed to last. So that's part, that's a scenario. Okay, then we have the budget income items, and we have got undesignated funds in there as well, and I'll explain that a little bit later. However, what I did want to mention is that um, our grand list did go down a little bit this past year, and the reason for that is a lot of it had to do with personal property taxes. Uh, we don't have the inventories for the, in the stores are not as great as they were, and people are not buying equipment. So that's down by like $2 million. Okay, and then um, there has been very little change as far as any new buildings or any new construction. The only new construction is one that's under the tax stabilization. So, and they're only paying 20% of it this year. So that is a change. So I do want to say that the grand list is down by like $2 million from last year. So with that being said, uh, I want to explain and designate the funds a little bit. So at the end of FY21, unassigned funds, we had 1,344,000. Of that, we pledged 429,930 to FY22. Okay, we don't know obviously how that's ended yet. So we have a balance of $914,070 in unassigned funds. And in um, FY21, we had a surplus of over $500,000. So with that being said, what I've done is I've taken some of the undesignated funds, and in this first scenario, the one that I gave you, I'm saying if that we put $400,000 against on the undesignated funds um, against the tax rate, then the tax rate would go from what right now is 0.5977, it would go to 0.6418, which is a five cent increase or 7.8%. If we use $450,000 worth of undesignated funds, then we would bring the rate down to 63.23, which is a four cent increase, or 6.4%. If we use 500,000 of the undesignated funds, then we would bring it down to 6.6228, which is uh, three cents, and that's a 5% increase. Well, with each of those, what does the uh undesignated fund uh, account look like? Okay, so uh, like I say, the undesignated fund account right now, we're saying is 914,070. Okay, and so if you were to, you know, obviously take out 500,000, then you'd be down to 414. And that's still very healthy. Yeah. Because I think last year we were drawing it down to 350. And that's the, the worst case scenario. I was trying to follow your quick numbers there, yeah. it could, and uh, it almost sounded like the more we use, the the higher the tax rate, which didn't the make sense the to me. Rate. It yeah. should be that. It yes. is, yes. But it, okay, can you, okay, can you go yes. over just one okay. more time? Yes. So, so 500, it's point? It's point six two two eight. Okay. Okay, which is three cents over this year's. Okay. Um, and 450,000 is point six three two three, which is 4%. And 400,000 is 0 0.6418, which is five cents. Okay, which you want to go? I'd like to set the tax 
rate. Now, the school tax rates are a little bit higher this year. They're not as low as they were last year. They're not tremendous, but they are a little higher. At what level do you feel comfortable with the undesignated funds? Um, I am comfortable with having at least 350, and no matter what we do on this, we should have about 400. However, I do not know what FY22 is going to end up, because I think we probably overspent. And I have no way of knowing that because of the union contract, I still don't know <laughs> what that number is going to be that I'm going to be putting into FY22. Which one would you recommend? I guess I'd recommend the 450, okay. which is a four cent increase. The four cent increase. Which is 6.4 percent. And that would leave the tax rate at the um, 0. 0.632. Putting you on the spot here, but what would uh, what would that mean to a you mentioned a two hundred thousand dollar property like point six two two eight from point six three three two three. This is just the municipal rate. I'm not calculating in you know, which the majority of the rate is the school taxes, obviously. So I'd be showing a difference on that, I believe. So it would be just on the municipal portion be eighty one dollars and twenty cents increase. But that's on the municipal portion of the money. About every fifty fifty thousand then is around eighty dollars. Your motion on how the board feels here. Diane's, you said you were comfortable at four hundred fifty thousand. Yes. Or, you know, five hundred is okay, but I'm yeah. more comfortable. At the four fifty. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know what FY twenty two is going to do. I guess I'd be willing to make a motion to do the undesignated funds at 450, um, making the tax rate at 
There a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is Flo Moon muted? She is. She's on mute. It wouldn't allow me to unmute, but I am saying aye as well. Thank you. <laughs> Motion carries. Uh, so all set there, Diane? Yep. Okay. Uh, paving bid opening and award. You have the three of them in your package. There should be three. One large and two small envelopes. Pick one. And which is this paving for? Uh, what's the paving for here? For the um, there's uh, three streets four. in there. Four. The paving of Vine Street. Bottom of Crosstown on the Riverton side. Air Street and School Street. from uh, Johnson Paving Company. Good for paving. It doesn't specify where, but 126 tons of base, 440 tons of top, 566 tons total, uh, cost of 122.71 per ton, total bid of 69,455 from Johnson Payton. It's page three or three, but there's just one page. It's from Pike Industries. Uh, looks like a 605 at a unit price of 172 total bid price of 104,000 0 104,060 104,060 dollars it's quite a bit of difference in tonnage wasn't it yes what was the total tonnage on yours? 566. This job will be paved with two and a half inches type two base, inch and a half type three top coat, approximately 340 feet of Vine Street. The second portion of the bid is 740 feet of Crosstown Road. Third portion of the bid is approximately 660 feet of Air Street. The fourth part of the bid is 312 feet of School Street. All three overlays should be an inch and a half top coat. So the third one is from ST Paving. Um, and their estimate total tonnage is 555 tons. Cost per ton is 148. Dollars total job is eighty two thousand one hundred and forty dollars. It gives nothing as far as uh, amounts, thicknesses. thicknesses. Those two tonnages were a lot closer together. They were. Yeah. Uh, Tim, how many of these visited, <coughs> talked to you, and visited the site, Justin? That you're aware of. All three of them visited the sites. I spoke directly with two of them. Um, we did a site visit with SD, and I spoke with Pike over the phone. Did you give them? Uh, they all had specifications. Yeah, yeah. same specs as far as so the base in the back of, of in the back of Dave's is the 
the Berlin letterhead part that they all receive that the specs of so it's all bid they all receive the same spec, spec of what it the base requests. had to be what the what the top coat had to with the wear coat had to be and estimated footage uh, there was when I measured it there was on the written on the outside envelope I believe of ST paving they're also they also when they delivered that they requested the option of having a price adjustment a price adjustment based on current current Economic rates at the time the work is done that sure. should fuel continue to rise so it only changed a bit. It's normally in, Pike normally puts that in theirs as well. I think there's a letter in there with the scope of their work. They usually put in an AC. Top yeah, adjustment. adjustment clause, yeah. 69,454. I'd like to make a motion to accept uh, Johnson Paving's bid, a low bid, at uh, 69,455. Second. Any further discussion? Can I, can I read your estimate? Who makes who makes sure that uh, the scope of work is adhered to? I do. I guess. Yeah. Well, no, 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 make sure, make sure that yeah. it's done to With the what scope we, of work. What we presented to them, they have to abide by it. Yeah. With it being 104,060. Kind of all over the board. Yeah. But those two are similar in the tonnage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Johnson had a higher tonnage and a lower price. All those in favor of awarding the contract to Johnson, Johnson Paving? Aye. 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 Motion so, carries. Can I add something? Sure. Uh, so with it being roughly half of what their budget is, there was some questions about we have a, some more smaller work, that some aprons and a few intersections that need to be address because we were a little concerned about the cost of everything earlier this spring and not didn't want to go branch out too much so we stayed kind of with these smaller roads this year versus what we've been stick we've been sticking with some larger roads the last few years because the price has shot up so much so um, if you guys are all right with it I'd like to approach them to see if if they'd be interested in doing some smaller some of our aprons, like the Dog River Road, the apron on the 12 side is pretty, pretty tore up. What do you expect the cost would be? Well, I think we would ask for, I th for them to keep the same I tonnage think, price. Yeah, we would, we would ask them to keep the same tonnage price and, and give us, you know, if that's all right with you guys. And it's just going to be more on the mobilization of equipment. Yeah, you know what I mean? They would have to give us, projects. they'd have to give us, you know what I mean? Well, they are quite a bit under anybody else. I'm just worried about the, about the, uh, corporate, uh, over the $5,000 $5, for different, actually it's a different job really. It's not the same job. We can always put it out to bed too. Yeah. yeah. But you put together a list for us of the, I mean, would that be difficult to uh, kind of what, what your thoughts are for oh, small right now? Jobs? Dog not, not, not right now. Oh, I know exactly what they <laughs> are. <laughs> Dog River Road and the end of Three Mile Bridge Road and um, Junction Road intersection at the, the bridge down there. That, that intersection you. is hard to <laughs> maintain. It's a funky intersection. And if we pave out from the bridge to pave that intersection, when we grade down there, we just grade up to a straight piece of asphalt and not try to do a, you're down there trying to do a triangle in that, in the guardrail. And uh, you're talking about the through Mel Bridge? Yeah, right at the bridge. Yeah. And you got to get a hold of the state sometimes, see why that uh, keeps caving in. Mm. 
Well, it needs to be paved is what it is. It's just to keep, to throw coal patch in. We've been back and forth. Middlesex does it sometimes. We do it sometimes. It's just, it gets water underneath it and it blows the coal patch right back out and then it's just there. It's just, it's the joint. It's where the pavement meets up to the embutment. Yeah. So you kind of get a pothole in there and yeah. So yeah, I was always, always down to bigger, the point of where it needs bigger. to be. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I was always under the impression that we owned the abutment and uh, Middlesex owned the bridge. Yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> that's one of them fine line, hairy, hairy spot. Yeah. Type, you know, but then again, I the town know. line is. You know, I mean, without being surveyed, exactly it was. Well, we've been told from what I was told when I started it was is the bridge was all Middlesex's, and after you come off the bridge, that's where we. Maintain. Yeah. The Middlesex plows over to that intersection and then goes back across the bridge. Yeah. We always. Yeah. But still, I, I mean, it has a short apron on it, anyways. Yeah. But, but it still would be good to know uh, just why the why that keeps falling down through. We never used to do that. It started up, what, five six years ago. So get what, I don't know, Does the state send down a bridge inspector for that kind of work? Typically, I believe they do, yeah. They normally, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. not sure what yeah. their schedule is, but they have, like, they do it on a rotation. Uh, I'm pretty sure they don't do them all every year. It's so, I mean, I just make a request to them, them to, to find out just what the, what the problem is so we don't have to keep cold patching it. Okay. Um, all in favor of awarding the... So we already have that. Yeah. Okay. Um, approval of minutes meeting of uh, April 4th, 2022. I make the motion to approve the minutes of the meeting from April 4th, 2022, as presented. Second. Any discussion? You're uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And motion carries. Approval of minutes from April 18th, 2022. Your motion. We approve the minutes for April 18th, 2022. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, 2nd of May, 2022. Make a motion to approve the minutes as presented for May 2nd, 2022. 2nd. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And uh, minutes from, uh, for, uh, for uh, May 16th, 2022. Make the motion to approve the minutes from May 16th, 2022. I'll second it. Uh, any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion, Aye. Motion carries. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications, payroll warrants. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 23-01 for payroll from June 19th of this year to July 2nd of same year to be paid on July 6, 2022 in the amount of $47,153.88. Also payable warrant 22G25 with checks 22097 to 22131 for fiscal year 22 payables in the amount of $27,414.22. Also payable warrant 22G01 with checks 22133 to 22138 for fiscal year 23 payables in the amount of $48,226.72 and the June 2022 reconciled bank statements for the general fund and also the sewer water division. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, round table, Dave? No, I don't think. Hello? No, thank you. 
Barrow? Yeah, I'm just, uh, we have new voting tabulation machines, and it was uh, not advertised by the state at all, uh, but there was a new contract bid awarded for voting machines in every, um, every town that uh, doesn't hand count got the new machines. They're from um, indirectly, they're Dominion machines, which have been controversial. If you follow news and election news around the country, uh, some miscounts or reversals in Wisconsin and miscounts in New Hampshire with the Dominion. So um, I just wanted to bring that up as something that, although we're in a bit of flux with our election, certainly uh, I, I'd really like to consider um, at least the first use of those in a general election, uh, at least spot hand count verification of, of what they give us as a report, rather than just accepting what they print out uh, on the first tabulation anyway. I think Carl, it, are you referring to the primary election or the general no, election? No, the first general election, okay. I think, would make sense. Yeah. And, that in, and just as a point of note and interest, there was no press release, there was no advertising mm -hmm. of the decision made to purchase these by the outgoing Secretary of State. Uh, so I thought it was uh, pretty interesting that with all the turmoil uh, around the last two presidential elections, uh, both you know, the two, 2016 and 2020, um, that people had issues with that uh, this wasn't, this was kind of slipped, slipped through quietly. <laughs> Under the radar. Yeah. <laughs> Else? Joe? I'm good, thank you. And uh, that concludes the. Uh, now we have the signature for something that we added to the agenda. Yes. Oh, I, yes. Sorry. Oh, yeah. The I need a signature. Um, since the town clerk retired, um, I need the secretary of select board to sign this. This is the do an authorization from the bank. So that I can already sign text, but that things can be the second sign. It's right up there. Mm -hmm. Glad you were hanging on to that, Diane. Yeah. <laughs> Clear. I have to do the money, Carl. Watch it. I don't, yeah. I don't <laughs> want to sign your name again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Should I print here? Yes. Print there. Yep. Yeah. Okay, um, that concludes the business of the select board. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session for personnel. I make, make a motion that we enter into executive session to discuss personnel issues. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're in executive session. Okay, um, a motion to uh, offer Callie Streeter the job as assistant treasurer for $22 an hour. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hello? I'm in favor, yes. Oh. <laughs> All those signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Flo. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.